Hi, Chris. How's it going? Good. Hi, Chelsea. Nice to meet you. Uh, things are going well. Uh, I'm just excited to talk to you today about Inspiration Four. Absolutely. You know, so as an Air Force veteran, a Lockheed Martin employee, and an amateur astronomer, I have to assume that space is something you've been interested in and passionate about for quite some time. Is, is this true? Could you tell me about your love for space? Sure. Well, I, I think my love for space and all things rocketry and aerospace started when I was little. Um, my dad uh, started doing model rockets with me uh, when I was in elementary school. And, uh, and so I got my first taste of what it was like to lose a model rocket in the pine trees of Florida um, <laughs> pretty early on. But I uh, kind of just always had that interest in solving problems and taking on challenges. And so I you know, in high school, I, I actually, even as early as elementary school, I was part of the math teams and did math competitions and um, always looked at finding creative ways to solve problems. And I think um, all those science teachers and math teachers and even some, I've had some amazing um, English and history teachers as well that always encouraged me to dig a little deeper um, and find out a little bit more behind just what the bare requirements are. Uh, and so along those lines, I developed that passion just for all things above me in the sky and in space and the stars. And uh, I had an, a really great physics professor who would only accept the best of us students. And when I say great, he just I just knew he had this way of challenging us to, uh, of uh, reaching beyond what we, we thought was acceptable or, you know, the bare minimum again. And uh, he had a reputation for always, you know, demanding the most. And he would ask a question expecting us to have the answers have you know, prepared. And he was that instructor that, uh, you know, if you, as he's asking, okay, so what's the and as he's, has on, as he's up at the chalkboard writing down the equation and talking about the, the, the solution and he asked a question, okay, so what's the next part? And if nobody responded, he would just hold there a moment. If it was still silent, he'd put his chalk down, he would turn around, he'd wait. And still, if no one responded, he would walk out of the classroom and wait till he had the answer in that kind of <laughs> almost Socratic kind of way. Uh, but he, he taught me a lot of different things about what it was like to, uh, to look at with the stars and find those hidden surprises um, up in the sky that you don't always think to look for. And, you know, knowing that in between all those beautiful constellations we see, there are galaxies and clusters that with even just strong powered binoculars and knowing where to look, you can find these amazing images in the night sky on a clear night that will just really put it into perspective as to what our place is in the universe. We've got this small uh, planet here where we all live, where we're all here together and realizing that we are just one tiny iota of, uh, of what the entire universe is made of. Uh, it, and so that that really was inspirational and inspiring to me to want to know more and figuring out how we can uh, learn more about that and see what else is out there to help not just understand what's there, but, you know, apply some of the, the things that we've learned to us back here on the ground on Earth. I think that was so just so inspirational there. And then the whole thing of me having to be a part of space and having to be a part of aerospace was really sealed once I went to college and, and got up close to see a space shuttle launch for the first time in person. Um, and like for so many people, it feels like that is just a life altering experience. And when you feel the roar and the thunders, uh, thunderous sound come at you from across the river, um, coming from the solid rocket boosters and then from the shuttle main engines a few seconds later uh, and seeing all of that power and light just brilliantly light up the night sky. Um, it's something you have to be a part of um, to really understand why it draws so many people in. So much effort and time and energy and research and work went into making it happened for those few individuals that got to go for that incredible ride on top of the space shuttle and continuously to be, and, and to be continuously supported by all the other people that were left on the ground 
from Mission Control to the engineers and technicians that were monitoring and ready to refurbish the shuttle. And, and the same is true for SpaceX as well. So that's that's how it came to be for me to love all things aerospace. And uh, it's just uh, exciting for me to really to be able to merge my professional career back into aerospace, doing the work that I do, um, and, and then to be a part of this inspiration for a mission. Um, it, it feels just so, so overwhelmingly satisfying and amazing. And uh, I feel so blessed in that there was so much generosity afforded to me to make this all happen. Absolutely. Um, now, you know, your passion for space and science and exploration is very clear, but I'm curious throughout all of that, did you ever think you might actually one day go to space? No, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Not at all. I, and because I, I, you know, being a space camp counselor, even you, I understand that the history of space and what traditionally it means to be an astronaut. Um, I knew I wasn't the most physically stellar fit person that you have out there. Um, and, and I was OK with that. I am OK with that. Um, and I think what I was I mean, these astronauts are my heroes in a lot of ways and have been. Um, growing up, um, I can't tell you how many like glossies I have, you know, autographs and whatnot, I think um, from my days at space camp. But uh, it's, uh, I think what's pretty cool about it is that um, I had always been that person behind the scenes, uh, encouraging people, encouraging campers at space camp to, to know more about space, to pursue their dreams of space travel. And literally I was the guy, you know, backstage making sure for different productions in college and even um, at home and different things, I would, I would do stage work to help others shine the light or help them shine in the light of the spotlight. Um, whether it was, I was literally working a spotlight or, or setting up the stage or doing the sound or, or just helping out here and there. And then to have it flip to where now I'm the one on center stage, totally new experience for me, totally new. It's incredible. Um, you know, I, I know that you've had kind of an interesting road to getting to your seat on Inspiration4. Could you speak a bit to how you originally got involved with the mission and how you ended up flying to space, becoming a private astronaut? Sure. I, I mean, I like so many of us, we were all watching the Super Bowl and on came the Inspiration4 commercial. Um, and given everything that I've just told you about, being interested in space, you can win a trip to space. Well, who's not going to sign up for that? Well, I, <laughs> gosh, and well, of course, my wife just rolled her eyes when she was looking at me over from the couch saying, I was sitting there on my phone and donating some uh, funds to St. Jude thinking, all right, well, I'll never go to space and I don't win things ever. So that's okay by me, but hey, I will get a neat little patch out of it. And uh, that'll be my little token of memorabilia. Um, a little bit of swag to be a part of whatever comes out of this and that's fine. So a little donation to St. Jude, do my part, help them out because, you know, it's, it's great that we can celebrate doing things in space while we're trying to solve big problems on the ground and knowing that we can do both of those at the same time is, is fantastic. And uh, I forgot about the whole donation to St. Jude um, because, you know, it wasn't the first time I've, I've donated to St. Jude before. And so I, I it, it was you know, a few minutes on the phone and uh, forget about it and continue eating snacks, watching the game and the commercials and uh, uh, and let it be at that. It wasn't until about a month later uh, when I was waking up one Saturday morning and uh, taking care of my kids and you know getting ready to go pick up breakfast that um, my wife uh, lets me know from upstairs that, hey, some inspiration for her is calling you. What is that? Um, okay. And because I had completely forgotten it. Um, <laughs> and so I, I grabbed my phone and on the way to go pick up some breakfast uh, with my youngest, you know, I, that, you know, I get on the phone with, uh, with, with kid, the mission director and, you know, his name's Scott, his, 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 his call signs kid. And so I was talking to Scott for a while about the mission and, uh, and he wanted to do some pre-verification uh, with me and to reply back, fill out some documents, give him some personal information. And I'm thinking, all right, I have been through all the 
uh, you know, uh, internet security trainings at Lockheed and whatnot, and, and previous jobs in the Air Force. And, and I think I literally said, you know, I just want to make sure too that I do my research on you, uh, kid, because I, uh, you know, I just want to make sure you are who you say you are. And he said, oh yeah, no worries. Yeah, look me up on LinkedIn. I'm a ex Thunderbird pilot, and which raised my eyebrows a little bit thinking, okay, this could be for real. And, <laughs> You know, I just want to make sure he wasn't trying to sell me some sort of extended warranty. So someone calls you and says, hey, we want to fly you to space. Could you fill out some paperwork? You ask a couple questions. You do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I know it's a long way to answer. I mean, you ask a couple of questions and uh, I, and uh, yeah, he's and so a little bit later in the day, um, I get the email and I look over it and he I think I talked to him again saying, yeah, I'd like to set up a Zoom call with you tomorrow. And so you can ask some questions of us and we can get to know you better. And it's like, all right, so I'll fill out this paperwork that says you are now part of a deep pool of candidates uh, as he's going through the pre-verification process. And it's like, all right, well, I fill it all out. It took longer than I expected. I sent him a lot of personal identifying information. And, uh, but you know, because I have that space background, I had that, it's like, you know what, what the heck, let's just go ahead and give him all information. and. Uh, you know, I can log on to some other identity theft website if need to later, um, but it was it was worth the risk. And so I get on the call, the Zoom call uh, the next morning um, and, uh, you know, I prepare for it. It's like it's my space interview. Like, all right, sure. Why not? I give it my best shot. I'm sure they've got hundreds of other people. Right. Like that, that want to do this. And so um, kids on the call and then Jared Isaacman's on the phone on the on the Zoom call as well, which. You know, I, at that at that point, not necessarily a recognizable person, and so like, okay, cool, nice, nice to meet you. And then the next thing I know, my friend shows up on the call too, and now I'm thinking it's a group interview, and I'm competing with him for some reason. I don't know why. It's an odd coincidence. Uh, and so I just mentioned, well, yeah, it's it's nice to see Kyla here. We haven't seen each other in a long time, and um, I haven't talked in a, in several months. And so, um, cool. Oh, and Jared said, oh. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'd like to hear more about that a little bit later. And just casually, calmly says, yeah, so actually your friend here won the sweepstakes and uh, has elected that is un he's unable to go and he gave us your name. And so we'd like to invite you on board uh, the Inspiration4 team and uh, be a part of the crew to go to space. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was just uh, that shock of realization of what was happening. Uh, left me numb. I was just saying the most boring reaction ever. She's like, wow, really? Cool. Wow. It's like, great. Oh, thank girl. you. Shaking hands. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I now still have that interview mentality that I've been working forward. So I asked lots of questions and I answered them like I was in an interview still and not really comprehending what he was talking about. And at the end of the call, great. We'll see you in a few days. Take you down to UCLA. We'll do some medical tests and like, okay, cool. And that was it. And then we were off to the races. I um, mean, I, I can I can't imagine the shock and just the the realization of that, you know, all setting in. And that was just a few months ago. I, I'm curious. I mean, that was just a few months ago, and we're only a few months until the scheduled launch date. Has it sunk in at all? Is it starting to feel real? Yeah, I think I, I, I think I felt that moment of realization, you know, after, not as soon as I met the crew or at, you know, when they picked me up, it was that moment when, you know, a kid handed me a bag of, of, of Inspiration4 gear and I refused to open it um, initially. It's like, okay, this, that's neat. Um, but, you know, the other you know, I met Sai for the first time and we were, and they were, she was excited. And she, if my reaction, I've been told that my reaction was like a three, you know, on a scale of one to 10, hers was like an 11 when they told her. Um, and so, you know, she's excited. She's, she opened it up and started pulling things out. So I decided, okay, I'll, I'll look and see what's in here too. And I think that moment that realization really hit me when I, I opened up the bag and pulled out the mission patch and just kind of held it in my hand for a few minutes. And having that in your hand and just feeling that and seeing that, um, you you make that physical connection to the story that you just saw play out on the computer screen. Um, and that's when it realized, I realized that, okay, 
wow, this is really happening. That, 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 I think that was the really first moment. There have been a lot of other really cool moments along the way of realizing what this means in terms of the future of human spaceflight and how kind of a historic moment this all is and how many historic moments there are leading up to flight. But that first moment of like getting that tangible piece that's connected with the mission was very, you know, in, you know, soul shifting in a way. Definitely. Um, that's I, that sounds like such an incredible moment. And I, I actually know Sai very well. Um, and so I, I can imagine her 11 out of 10 reaction. Um, and, and I'm sure that must have kind of helped to increase the group excitement. And this is really happening. She's excited. Can I get excited yet? I, I, I can only imagine how that went down. <laughs> You know, absolutely. That, and then you know, getting to know Dr. Proctor a lot more, and 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 what her background was. And I think for me, one of the most incredible parts of this whole mission, um, and an underlying story or message behind it, seems to be that you know, how how did we all get here? And um, you know, I, you know that that underlying love of space for me, and you know, no, my friend and I had gone through some things together promoting human spaceflight and doing high power model rocketry and. Um, Turing Kennedy Space Center together before. And, and so just having that out there, you know, pursuing some of those things kind of teed things up so that he knew who to think of, or what kind of people he wanted to, to offer this to um, uh, when he was unable to go. And then, and then talking to Dr. Proctor, realizing that her, her seat, she won based off of her heart and herself and her, her, uh, her space art, um, not just from what her experience and her resume said, you know, she's done all these amazing things, but her presentation during her interview to win her seat wasn't about anything on her resume. It was just, she let herself out and showed her true passion come out, or let her true passion come out when it came to her her love of space and for, and for art and, uh, and, her desire to make all things equitable and just and diverse and inclusive. And which I said that out of order, if you say it in the right order, it spells out Jedi space. Um, so uh, that I think really goes to the heart of the mission being called inspiration for is that being inspiring to others to pursue those dreams and to not be, and to be tenacious and to just really insert yourself in a space that you really want to be in, lets opportunities like this uh, come up. It's not just all about hard work. It's not just about being lucky, but it's both of those. Uh, and putting yourself in a place to take advantage of, of things that are that come along when the opportunities come up. Absolutely. Now, speaking to the the heart of the mission. I mean, it's inspiration for, and obviously each member of the crew is coming on, you know, representing a different pillar and with a completely different background and, and with different things in mind as to what they want to experience, what they want to bring home as, you know, given your professional background with Lockheed, with the military, but also given your experience as a space camp counselor um, and being a part of that pretty pretty significant community in the space world. It really is. What do you hope to bring home from space? What what do you hope to to bring back to Earth with you? Right, well, wow. I mean, first and foremost, I, I hope to bring with me as much of my family as possible and try to share in that experience with them as much as possible. Um, you know, so those are some things that I hope I can carry with me and doing things like, uh, you know, bringing some toys along, you know, or some special mementos that mean something to my daughters and, and take some pictures with those and bring those back. And, um, and then, I mean, you know, I enjoy journaling and writing about some things that I experience, and I really want to be there in the moment to see what those experiences are like. And I intend to um, you know, write, uh, you know, a love letter to my wife while in space because i mean how many times do you get to do to do that i mean I, that that was one of the ways that we actually uh, built our relationship is when i was deployed is you know i would physically write letters to her back and forth um from iraq and uh, that 
that's a very meaningful thing to both of us. And so that's what I hope to take up to space. What I hope to bring back um, is one of those things that I'm told is one of those things that you can't ignore when you're flying over the earth. And we've got this big, beautiful window to observe it from. Uh, is I, I'm expecting that when I look back down at earth, I will see no lines. I'll see no divisions. I won't see red versus blue. And I'm trying to bring back what that is, what that means um, and what that feels like to talk about how are we all here together on the same spaceship for lack of a better word, you know, we're all here in the same earth. Why are we separating ourselves and dividing ourselves off because of certain lines on a map or certain ideological reasons when we could do so much greater things together if we just are generous with our time and our efforts and give ourselves the opportunity to help one another um, through the sharing of our own uh, time and talents and resources. Um, that is really what I'm hoping to bring back is that philosophical and emotional feeling that I experienced being over the earth. And I, I, I imagine it and I, I, I've been told about it, you know, doing the overview effect. And I think there's something to that. And I'm excited to see what that feels like personally for me. I'm hoping to bring that personal feeling back and communicate with as many people as I can uh, to see what we can do and achieve uh, together. Absolutely. You know, kind of jumping back into where we are in this moment, uh, I'm I'm curious if you could speak a bit about your role on the crew, your individual role, and what it's been like training for that position. I mean, it feels like, you know, you just got the call and it's already happening. I'm sure it's been quite a whirlwind, but if you could give me a glimpse into what your role on the crew and, and preparing for that has been like. Right. So my role in the crew, crew, my role on the crew as a as a mission specialist is is really to be um, in charge of all, all the cargo ops and main, making sure that things, um, well, first and foremost, safety reasons are, you know, making sure our standard of gravity is correct for re-entry and everything like that, uh, and that we take care of things according to SpaceX's packing plan. Um, and so I'll be there for that and to help conduct experiments. Uh, I'm also there to, to help as a, a backup to Haley as our medical officer. Um, and so I'm learning all things medical because as a dad, I'm by default in the fine print, you are officially the family handler of all things icky, sticky, and gross. Um, so I am more than happy to help out with the medical side of things. Um, and uh, I think on the when it, it's, it's an amazing thing to be a part of this group. Um, it, it's very serendipitous how this each of us came to this uh, team and I could not be prouder or more excited to be a part of this group of individuals who all represent different parts of, of humanity in a way. I mean, and we, and we each have our own unique personalities and strengths that really cover so much uh, of what you need in a team. I, I mean, you know, in, in a place where I'm really strong, another team member may not be as strong. And then where I don't have those same strengths, uh, someone else does. And that, that we've, identified that there really aren't any gaps in strengths as long as we know who to reach out to uh, to help us be successful in this mission. So I think that's been really cool and been bonding really well and working together. We're all tenacious. None of us give up. Um, we've all learned how to be comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. Uh, and that's a really big part of what it takes to, to go into space because as it turns out during training, putting on those space suits, space is sweaty. And you're going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> My main takeaway from this talk has been space is sweaty. I want you to know. I, I believe it. Yep. That's what <laughs> I expect. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I just I just really have one more question. Thank you for being so generous with your time, Chris. Um, I know also being on the West Coast, I know it's early and I, I really appreciate you sitting down to chat with me. Um, right. You know, just to, to land on on looking to the future and, and anticipating this mission and this launch, I'm, I'm curious, it's a two-part question, if there's anything you're most excited about, 
And if there's anything that you are most nervous about, this is a, a launch to space. This is a, a big deal. I know that, you know, we're routinely launching to space now compared to, you know, previous moments in history, but launching to space is still a huge deal. So I, I'm curious on both sides of that spectrum, how you're feeling. Well, when it comes to things that I'm nervous about, I, one of the things I'm not nervous about um, that traditionally a lot of people are is about the safety uh, of, of the crew and, and myself. I, I think I'm just exhilarated and thrilled and excited. Uh, I think I've got that extra benefit of knowing the history of rocketry and, and that the, the mishaps and the accidents that have occurred to know what's different about Falcon 9 and Dragon. Uh, and how there are so many different safeguards and being, that have been put in um, in the testing process that they went through. Uh, I think that, that, so I don't have any concerns about that. Plus I've also met the, the, the technicians on the ground in Florida and, and in California, um, incredible people, incredibly talented. Many of them are veterans, um, but they're all highly motivated and highly detail oriented individuals that really Give you a lot of confidence in the work that they do i think my my biggest fear though out of all of this is that as i go through this and i since i've been given this such incredible opportunity to go into space i would hate to think that as we lead up to launch that that experience in my life comes to just a three days of being in space and then nothing uh, i don't want my story to end up being that oh yeah by the way there was this one time they went in space for three days and you know and that was it i i it, being such an enthusiast of all things space and aerospace that um this is kind of another opportunity to take advantage of being a part of that big space community that is so passionate and so welcoming and wants everyone to succeed so that's probably what I'm most fearful of is, uh, you know, just making sure that this is just not a one point in time thing and that it, it means something not just to me, but I'm able to share that generosity with other people and experience space with so many other folks um, before and after the mission. Uh, and so what am I looking forward to most, though, is uh, I tell you what, I, I am I am looking forward to being up in space and experiencing um, the Earth going by and you know, being around it every every 90 minutes in low earth orbit, uh, knowing that we're going to be the, the humans, the, the farthest humans from earth since um, since uh, since Hubble, so about 15 years. I think that's an incredible thought. So um, yeah, and I'm just really excited to see what it's gonna feel like and to be present with my own thoughts and microgravity with the earth flying down below. And uh, that is an experience I can't imagine um, being like anything else we've seen on Earth. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for speaking with me, Chris. I, I hope that this is really just the beginning of a much larger journey for you in space and in aerospace. Um, and I can't wait to see how training progresses. And I can't wait to see you launch. So it's fun talking to you. Thank you so much.